This is my folding camp saw and it works great but for my bush class lesson I need to make a bow saw and a buck saw using only a saw blade. So I'll remove the saw blade from this and I'll improvise one out in the field. Let's get started. I found this piece that has a nice natural curve to it. So I'll put on my gloves and I'll cut the branch down. And I'll cut it to the exact length I need. Then I'll cut slots in both ends for the blade. I'll use these key rings in the end of the saw blade to hold the blade in place. Put one end of the blade in and carefully bend the stick so you can get the other end in without breaking it. I wrapped both ends in twine to keep it from splitting and to hold the blade more secure. And here it is, ready to start cutting. Here you can see I have much more clearance for cutting than my folding saw and now I can use the full length of the blade too. In making this bow saw for this lesson, the only cutting tool I could use was the actual blade itself, nothing else. It actually cuts better than my store-bought folding saw and I hated to take it apart, but I had to make a buck saw for the lesson too. So here's a little of the wood I cut with my improvised bow saw. For the buck saw lesson, the only cutting tool I can use is a knife. I can't even use the saw blade itself. And you can see I didn't bend the tree and then cut it with the knife because I didn't want it to split on me. First I'll make the two uprights. They're going to be about a foot long. And since I can only cut this using a knife, not a saw, I'll have to baton it and then spin it, baton it and spin it, and keep doing that until it splits apart. I'll also clean up and chamfer the ends too so it looks a little bit nicer. And since now I'm worried about looks I guess, uh, when I was cutting it I split some of the bark so I'll just remove all the bark and make it look real pretty. There, these look better, huh? Again, I can only use a knife for this lesson, so to get the saw blade in, I'm going to have to split the wood a little bit. I'll put my key rings back on the saw blade again, and then I'll slide the blade down the split ends. Now I can measure and cut for the crossbar. But the crossbar needs to have both ends carved to a flat point like this. Now that the cross piece is carved and cut to the correct length and shape, I need to cut some notches in the uprights for the cross piece to fit into. When I grip the upright with my hand, I want a little more than an inch of space left, so that's where I'll cut my notch. Then I'll line up both uprights together, making sure the split ends are both on the same side, and then I'll mark and cut the second notch. Remember when I said to make sure the split ends were both on the same side? Yeah, I didn't do that. Oh well, I'll just carve another notch. There, that'll work. I'll also cut some little notches in the top outer sides of the uprights for the cordage. And here it is all laid out and ready to be strung up with the cordage. Then I wound the top string on, installed and tightened the windlass, Then wrapped the bottom ends of the uprights to keep them from splitting.
Well, as you can see, the improvised buck saw works great too. I'm having a ton of fun learning these skills on Bushcraft USA in the Bush class section. Uh, go check them out at bushcraftusa.com. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.